This is why the chairman only goes one year because he takes a couple of years to recuperate, get his hands straightened out. Hey. Yeah, sometimes you can get a free ticket for carpal tunnel surgery at the end of your term. Yeah, well, that last thing you should add. <laughs> <laughs> And gets tired. Next item, gentlemen, is a man CIP project. This is what we the appraisers and the yeah. uh, courts. Right. It's what we discussed on Thursday, correct? Uh, yeah. I'm going to go ahead and make an motion that we approve the amended CIP project for both the appraiser and courtroom remodels. Uh, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Chairman, please. Place. I thought you had a lot of mad people from the court and appraiser's office. You did. You did. Everybody did you get, get in line. Mm -hmm. Next item is the MPO agreement. I could take a moment to kind of explain that if you need that. Uh, okay. I, I don't. I don't. Oh, okay. Um, basically, it's just a change in the fiscal agents at this point in time from the city of Manhattan to internal. I don't think any of the formulas or anything are going to change it's just they're going to do it internally and just how to properly deal with payments i guess that were between each of the entities and, and the mpo so nothing nothing major there if there's no questions i'll make a motion that we uh, go ahead and improve the new fiscal agreement between flint hills metropolitan planning organization and riley county second all in favor all right Aye. chairman please Well, we'll all get her in the bank she? Nope. No, that's too bad. That's because somebody that wasn't supposed to actually be down there decided to stick a trap out there. Yeah. Oh, is that who caught it? Yeah, yeah just so, some random person caught it and it was I an underwater was trap. It was oh. an underwater trap and she got in there and they basically it was drowned. The ones that were actually supposed to be drowning for mm -hmm. it. Hmm, that's too bad. And they simply tied the trap off or staked it down. So we had that problem. Mm -hmm. That alligator would have been very happy once it was in there. So, no. <laughs> the officer was going a couple of years watching people out here hunting their homes. <laughs> Did you smell good? Kind of a K State, depending on how severe our winters are, they could possibly make it through one like this last year. They claim, yeah, we see it where on my place. I've got some uh, 16, 18 foot deep water. Mm -hmm. So, you know, then there's a springs come in so it never freezes along the bank. So, there's Possibility. 
I'm going to do the Bobcats up and wrestle. Mm. <laughs> well, mm -hmm. uh, we put that last winter of Thursday, mm -hmm. uh, small enclosure right in front of the door, and that uh, my son, I was about that. Bobcat jumped over the chain link, grabbed that squirrel under the cedar, and right back over and before he could blink on it. Yeah, I've been out there right up against your house, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He says the squirrel, the squirrel was protesting. That's cool to see. <laughs> not anymore. It's not, not okay. very long. Less member counties to this. Yeah. Oh, you have to sign each one of those. Each, one, each yeah. one of those and it goes with the others. And they got to sign them. Attached with each contract. There's six of them, I think. Yeah. Three cities, three they counties. Just get a bigger reservoir in the state. Mm -hmm. If not, send me a picture. Next gentleman, we have Riley County Personnel Action Forms. Uh, Michael Regal, new hire, assistant fire chief in the fire district number one department, and Deja Taylor on uh, called juvenile intake officer. And I have one uh, late arrival. Uh, status change full time regular, uh, Jason Anderson, traffic control supervisor. It's a status change uh, from traffic control tech to traffic control supervisor. Now, but <laughs> just wait until those words are actually true. So somebody posed the question this morning: is How did they did they break in? How did they get them? And why didn't they get hurt? Grab a two of them. Well, they were outside in the pavilion, so access to them was pretty easy. But it would have to take somebody that would know how to handle that scenario. Uh, I just thought maybe since, since they right there in the wildcat, they just got loose and went right straight down to the creek. Ready for the minutes when the board is? That's possible. Okay, guys. Page one. <clears throat> I'm almost sure more than you can. Awfully, awfully slow. Okay. Mine's not working, so. Page two. Morning, Haley. Morning. Morning. Page three. Page four. Page five. Page six. Sorry. 
Page seven. I'm just not catching up. Yeah, sorry. Page oh, seven okay. is okay. No. I'll make a motion. We approve the minutes as written. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Gentlemen, I'll have tentative agendas. Look. Okay. <clears throat> Fine with me. Any items for next week's press conference? I don't have any. Okay, guys, thank you. Any just give them to me. Uh, next at nine o'clock, we have Danny Holiday and Lee Wolf with Tom's Prairie Community Health and Dental Center update. Okay. Well, Lee, how you doing? Good morning, doing well. Yeah. Yourselves? Yeah. Good. We're doing, doing well. Started. Okay. I will, uh, I know you guys are have a long agenda and very busy today, so yeah. I will try to hit the high points and be brief and cover anything and then if there's any questions at the end. Yeah, you gotta start at nine because it's first oh. I guess we'll just come on. Okay. Not, not yet. You can see it over here on the on the screen by oh, okay. Right. Time is all running together. Half -half -half -half. Yeah. <laughs> gotta keep right on schedule even if it's longer. No, that's not for that's not press conference, is it? No, no. Hmm? That's not we can we can go a minute or two, can't we? You're in charge. I'm in charge. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Just add a time to your day. Okay. Look at that. So what I brought were some just some informational handouts. Um you know, it as we know, it is unprecedented times, and we've kind of morphed and provided care in ways that we never imagined at a pace that we never thought possible. Um, but just as an update, as you'll see on your informational handout there, with the um, drive-through testing site, uh, the day the tent went up 420 to, as if we ran the report on 65 uh, from us, as you'll see, there have been uh, 245 COVID swabs, 72 evaluation appointments, 14 continuity of care appointments, roughly 2,000 plus staff hours. And when you break it down, staff hours, volunteer time, set up supplies and such, um, roughly 95 plus thousand dollars give or take as it moves forward. So I just thought these would be helpful in the future as it as hopefully there is some sort of vaccine developed or this gets under control. But if it does continue to ramp up and a spread happens again, we can kind of have an anticipation on dollars and cents staff wise of what it's going to take. Um, but more important, I wanted all of you to know that um, it is very impressive the way the Manhattan community, the Riley County community stepped up and responded with the COVID task force um, from the Riley County Emergency Management, the Riley County Health Department, uh, Via Christi, Manhattan Surgical Hospital, Riley County EMS, the Fire Department, the Police Department, and of course, all of the primary care physician groups around town, um, specifically Dr. Flourish and Dr. Chase with CenterPoint and uh, Dr. Knopf with Stone Creek. It, you know, it, it was good to see, and when I put this information out that was going on in Manhattan to other communities that had health centers, 
Wichita and Kansas City, uh, all the way out in western Kansas. Um, they had a lot of questions and they wanted to see, wanted to know what was working here and they were very impressed and started to emulate what was happening here. So it's a testament to everyone that was involved. It was really, it was really uh, a great response, all things considered. Um, and sometimes out of events like this, people find a way to really step up and work together. And it, it you know, considering uh, what we were responding to, it went very well. So now enough of the no fun stuff. We will be having, uh, working with um, the Raleigh County Health Department and working on some, as before you know it, school will be back in session. So some sports physicals and school physicals and dental screenings and a process over uh, the month of July. Some benefits we'll be offering and working together with the health department to make sure that people that come through have all the physicals they need and if they don't have some type of insurance coverage, help them out and get that and everything else that the community needs to prepare for school. So that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Like I said, I was kind of keeping it to Reader's Digest version to allow you, all of you, to proceed through your day because I know you had kind of a full agenda. So just from that, is there any additional questions that you guys have wanted to know? I don't, uh, but I, I really want to give it to you guys and, and uh, how good you were doing and you, how, how well you have put this together and the good that you're doing in the community. Well, thank you. Really it's, it's, it's much good. appreciated, but you know, we couldn't do it without the partners in the community. It's all, mm -hmm. I mean, everybody has their role and everybody has their part and we are just a group that plays one of those parts that has a specific role in all of it. And, and really it's just, you know, it, it really is, it was refreshing to see and it felt really good the way everyone rallied together and yeah. worked out. Yeah, it, it goes again with, with what the county itself has been doing over the years that we're always looked to by other counties of what, what happens. And this just adds another caveat to that. But um, they look to Riley County. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, <clears throat> thank you. Okay. Well, I wanted to just say the same thing. Thank you for everything yeah. you guys have done, everything you're doing, everything you'll be continuing to do. It's um, um, we're all part of this equation here, as you mentioned, and it's it's important. We're going to get through this. And if we do, we'll get through it together. Absolutely. 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 All right. Okay. Thanks, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, okay. Nine fifteen. Mr. Adams. <clears throat> How's David? Welcome back. How's everybody doing? Good. Good. Summer's here. Uh, yeah, it is. We did at least have a spring this year. We did? At least through everything that's happened anyway. At least we did have that. <laughs> I'm going to take your word for it. I didn't see much of it. Yeah. It rained. Yeah. Yeah, I bet you did. didn't. <laughs> yeah, I bet you didn't yeah. see much of it. Yeah. <laughs> So I was mowing my yard yesterday going, I did not get crabgrass preventer put down, mm -hmm. and I'm going to pay for it this year. Mm -hmm. Oh, well. The way it is, but you have to pay young daughters for <laughs> Yeah. They mowed a couple times for me. He didn't sound excited about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> We, we have the understandings in my house, leave the yard and the grilling to me. And, uh, you know, I, I get out of some of the cleaning and some of those things. So It's a balance. It, it is a balance. Because I don't clean to my wife's standards, and they don't yeah. grill to my standards. Right. So there's a reason we don't clean to my standards. <laughs> 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 Glad you finally learned that. <laughs> you know, I've been married 19 years. It took a little while, but I got there. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I don't wash clothes. I do laundry. I don't. I, I have I have an understanding. You know, she's kept it fairly simple for me. So I don't wash work clothes. So, but I can do towels and you know the 
everyday living, you know, other stuff, but I'm not, I don't touch work clothes. And if I have to stay on it, I know when I go home, I have to take off my, my shirt, you know, because I invariably wear coffee on me. And I know I have to take it off and I have to pre treat it and set it aside and let her know. I've never learned that. All right. I've learned that. You can take stains out of shirts. <laughs> if, you, if you treat it appropriately and in time. So I think it's the in time thing that always gets me. Well, she's also bought me the little box of those little wipes, mm -hmm. you know, that you can put yeah. on it. Yeah. So. Somebody should take care of you. Man, I mean, it's a chore some days. <laughs> what did they say? It takes a village. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, still struggling with the live stream? Yeah. yeah. Is it a connection problem? Yeah, I think there might be a few tubes in because we're trying out the different browsers and entry on my laptop too. Technology is great when it works. Yes, it is. <laughs> appreciate all, cool, appreciate cool. all you're doing, Mary. You. This stuff just happens. All pays the same. Yep. And you know, she will answer to Kim. All day long. Yeah, to Amy. what? To, oh, to Amy. Amy. It was Amy. Amy? <laughs> when she first got hired, she was over at our office within the first couple of days. I called her Amy about six times in three hours. And she never <laughs> said a word. So never never batted an eye. So when I figured it out, whatever we should I, like that I, day. I apologize to her and <laughs> put on that way. <laughs> Mary, Amy, I guess all the letters are still in play there, so. Well, three of the four are there. Yeah, you just missed one and they're just out of order. But. Is it working? It's okay, Danny. We all do it. <laughs> <laughs> Fishing ridge? Oh, one of them shots the jar from the bow. So it's other than that, no fish. I've been willing to go take a try the white bass again. I haven't made it out. I went for a couple hours Saturday morning and caught a five pound drum. Yeah, I caught Ooh. a huge drum. Lost fish with a catfish a couple mm -hmm. weeks ago. You know, I gave it to, there were some people, I was in my kayak, that's one of my daughter's kayaks, and there were some people shore fishing, and I hollered at them and said, I've got a big drum if you want it. He said, oh, Absolutely. So I toddled over and gave it to him. You know, I, uh, <clears throat> Wildcat, the drum and carp, I, I had to call some birds I was feeding, a couple of walkers and stuff, uh, when I'd catch them. Mm -hmm. And so it's probably been 12 years ago or so. Um, a friend of mine, uh, well, Jerry Dishman, he says, mm -hmm. Hey, he says, next time you catch a drum, he says, I'll trade the white bass. For and he told me all about it. Well, then it so happened, I just had to receive the Missouri Conservation Magazine that had a big long article on drums. And all you need to do when you catch them, you can't put them on a trailer. You've got to, you've got to dress them right then, right? You yep. make your line, and they're between. Mm -hmm. uh, crappie and walleye in mm -hmm. one flavor. Well, eh, I kind of questioned that, you know, but uh, Missouri Magazine, they use that for artificial crab and shrimp, you know, oh, with some okay. food coloring. Mm -hmm. And so I was telling my uh, brother-in-law about it. He and his wife had caught some some bass and some drums at Tuttle Creek the following week. So he had invited us out and they brought in a plate of the bass and then a big old plate of uh, drum cubed up. and I. Tried that drum and throw the bass in the trash can, and, and <laughs> I haven't caught a I haven't caught a single one since. I I had never caught one. I I never. Yeah. Well, I used a wild really. There's a lot of them, mm -hmm. you know, and right. And I didn't know that. Be. Right. And it says that they uh, Missouri Magazine they eat live food. I mean, they're a clean yeah. fish. Yep. And so the main thing you just you just fillet them, but they they uh, stress, so you can't put them on a shringer, and I guess right. those whatever out into the uh, meat, but. Uh, yeah, no, you just dress them immediately, put it in a cooler, mm -hmm. and uh, I just love it. But 
I don't caught one since. Yeah, I caught him on a on a, a small spinner bait in about four feet of water. Mm -hmm. Yep. So and, it, and he hit it hard. I mean, there was <laughs> there wasn't any doubt that I I had gotten a hold of a, a good sized fish. Yep. So. But, Sam, how you doing? Good. Let out a secret in my early 5 a.m. workout session that you go by Sam Honey. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the, uh, it's a K Rock guy, he said that's what they call you there. I stopped and said, What that? That's at the radio station. And then he said, Sam Honey. He said, We refer to him here as Sam Honey. No. <laughs> you just let the cat out of the bag. Well, you need to ask. Uh, uh, the morning guy on K Rock. Dave? Dave, yeah, Dave's the one. Dave's also the one who said that I was down at uh, Wildcat Creek during the Labor Day flood watching the levels all day. <laughs> <laughs> so, hence the question, were you? Okay. <laughs> I think I was here. Yeah, give him a hard time. He spread rumors about you early in the morning. Where are you working at at five o'clock in the morning? My house. Oh, oh, you heard him on the radio. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Mm Started that years ago and I had kids. Keep going. Keep going down. Keep going down. Not take okay. away family time, you know, so I just adopted that early on and they stuck with it. I'm an early one person anyway, so. And they have to transfer energy. Well, there's a reason. That's why my wife gives me a hard time. You're always you tired you're going at uh, nine. Still burn out at five every day. So yeah. 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 I was going to go. Uh, <laughs> I'm, after I got I'm not the only one. I'm not the only one, Rich. I figured I'd get caught in traffic. Yeah. I'm going to go during the week. I went down to the from the south. I said it late last night at 15. And it's just a good day. Yeah, good terrible. Yeah, I'm done. But yeah, the alarm goes off at five. Go ahead. Okay. Good morning, Commissioner. Good morning. Good morning. David Adams, CMS Ambulance Director, with my monthly update. So, uh, we'll start right off calls for service. Uh, May In May, we had 306 calls. We we're still down about 21% from normal. <coughs> it's, it's slowly ticking back up. Um, but uh, North County calls, we had 20, which is right on par. Right. Because they're, they're still, they, they never shut down. They never shut down. Absolutely. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm pretty short and sweet today. Uh, you know, education, uh, we're starting to schedule some classes for our staff. Uh, first class in July, we're doing our, our annual driver training. Uh, so we'll have half of uh, half of our staff will go through the, um, the classroom portion and all staff uh, full-time, part-time. We'll go through the driver, driving the cones and things mm -hmm. like that. Same, same thing we do every year. So we've got that coming up. We've got some, uh, uh, we're adding a couple new classes this year that we've never taught before. A geriatric emergency medical service is one that we've never taught. And then uh, it's the psychological trauma of, mm -hmm. uh, or psycho psychological trauma of the patient. I don't remember the exact wording for it. So two new classes that we've never taught that I think are important for our staff to, to be more well-rounded and such. So we've got, and then our, our normal advanced mental life support and our normal uh, emergency uh, child life support. So I'll talk about more of those in the couple, coming months, but we're getting those scheduled out. And uh, 
uh, we'll practice all of our social distancing. We'll do everything that we can. So, uh, still keeping our stations pretty well locked down at this time. So, uh, so there's no community outreach. Uh, the local uh, Safe Kids chapter has reached out to the state to see when uh, we can start doing car seat check lanes again, and, and it's not going to be for another few months, I don't think. So. Um, we're, we are doing some on a case-by-case -case basis, mainly through the police department. Uh, but uh, when we can, we're trying to do those outside. Uh, car doors open so we can move air through and things like that. So uh, administration, as I talked about last month, is now back in the office full time. Uh, still doing the best we can with social distancing and, and such. Uh, we're, we're disinfecting our stations, just like we're disinfecting our trucks and, and, and doing everything that we can. Uh, our new hires, we finally had to bring bring some of them in to finish up their orientation. We're doing that only at Station 1, again, to limit interaction, just like we do everything else. So um, we are allowing staff to uh, come inside other stations, but uh, when they do, we're, wearing, we're trying to wear masks and do stuff because um, we can only keep them locked down and, and away from getting some of the, some of the things for, for so long. So, but. Um, you know, that's kind of where we're at. And then, as I talked about last month, I was going to add some, some data here for you, um, you know, and it just so you have a little bit better idea of some of the different things. So the first thing right here is a response, runs by responding unit and their call signs. So Medic 11, 21, 31, and 41 are our four primary ambulances that are staffed 24-7, 365. So there's a breakdown of the call volume of those, of those stations. Uh, 31, uh, so 11 is the main station on Claflin. 21 is at uh, Manhattan Fire Station number two at 11th and Points. 31 is the station that is at uh, the truck at the county shops. And 41 is the airport ambulance. Uh, Medic 10 is the supervisor vehicle, and they must have run a, they must have written a patient care report at some time in this last month. I believe it was a uh, wreck up north just north of the Chap Park mm -hmm. that had multiple mm -hmm. patients. Yeah. And then Medic 13 is uh, one of our backup staff ambulances. It also responded to that wreck. Uh, we were busy, uh, of course, when, when calls mm -hmm. like that come in, the roll roads. We had a truck out of town. Uh, and uh, so we did an all call, asked for staff to respond back. We had, um, mm -hmm. within 10 minutes, I believe we had enough staff to come into staff both of our remaining two ambulances, Medic 13 responded to that call to assist. Medic 14, they stayed in town and they covered until crews could get back available. So that's why those are in there. You'll see uh, during standby season, you'll see Medic 13 and Medic 14 in there because that's because they're doing standbys. You have to write a, a report. So, so that's what those are. Runs by day of the week, kind of just a breakdown. So, um, you know, Mondays and Thursdays look like, uh, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, look like you know, they're a little bit slower. So that, uh, uh, you know, with students gone, Saturday's not as not as busy as you'll see when the students are here. Uh, so, but that's kind of the breakdown of, of those. So, and then this last one is just a breakdown of the, by one hour increments, uh, when, we're, when we're the busiest throughout 24 hours. And so this is sampling over the month. So, um, you know, it's kind of just kind of breaks it down really from about 8 until uh, 8 a.m. till about uh, 8 p.m. is when we're the busiest, which is what you would expect. So, especially during the early morning, you know, 8 o'clock, people are going to work and they're up and they're moving around and things like that. And then in the evening, obviously, going home, but then they're home and they're doing stuff. In. So they're not a, they're not at their work. So just something I thought that you might be interested in, kind of just seeing this. Mm -hmm. So that's really all I have. Do you have any questions? I don't. It's good information, though. Okay. I mean, it kind of tracks with uh, what happens and mm -hmm. and um, yeah, this and kind of deal. What was the tracking period? Uh, the month of May. Okay. So. This was something we've been, like I said, I get a report that's 27 pages long. Um, and you didn't, you know, so this was something that as we slowed down and things were kind of slow at work, Josh was able to work on this and manipulate it a little bit, get us what we we're trying to do. So, 
Okay. Anything else? Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Press conference at nine thirty. I did go up Thursday afternoon, no, it's right, and look at Monty's record the idea of work manner stuff is. Mm -hmm. So we wall that off and, and use that in hey, I forgot to check to see the status of that street one. or whatever. The city will not allow it to the top light, mm -hmm. but if it moved to the far end, if we built that complex, uh, that's far enough on that line. It's like a year. You what? Okay. I didn't take a picture down there. I should have taken a picture of the people in the water and stuff like that, but I got it with the cars lined up. The the um, spaces where you're supposed to be parking, one of them was almost empty. But we had to drive You can't. Yeah. Something. It'd have been busy down there, you know. It, 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 I've seen some pictures on social media of people that are trashing the area. Yeah. Even trashed, empty cans, empty. Uh, um, it's a privilege. It's not necessarily a right. Just. Need more joy juice. Mm -hmm. Need joy juice. Oh. from a meet and greet or something because of the threat. Oh, really? Yeah. Yes, the 
learn not to put it where they can get them. Well, he always carries one the report said, but he was going to some shooting event after where he was going, so that's why he had so many in there. Three of them were long guns. Didn't have them in the trunk or back I think he drives a truck. It is now 9.30, time for press conference. Gary, <coughs> would you come up? Well, it's always, it's, it's always a great pleasure to reward a uh, uh, person recognition for the service that they did. That's a long time, a major part of your life. It's been a great time. And uh, I think it's great that uh, you're going to retire with a whole new life is going to come out now. So anyway, so in recognition of, of your service, I'd like to present you with this plaque. Thank you. And uh, we kind of hope you come back if you got bored doing the other one. I'm sure you'll find something to do. Speech of Mike has me back. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, um, I guess we're not supposed to do a whole bunch of stuff, but okay. <laughs> 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 I need to get that. Yeah, there you go. 
Okay, there you go. <laughs> okay. Anything to say? What are you going to do? What, what's going to happen? Well, I, I farm too. So okay. You, you'll be busy. Yeah, I'm always busy. I just might not have to go late in the night or all my weekends. Ah, okay. But anyhow, 30 years ago, they opened Scenic Drive. And guess what? It was a gravel road. And they feared it wasn't going to be busy. But it was so dusty that we got involved. We had to water that down every day. And I got involved. We had a two ton truck. And so, no, not too many people know that. And on the way here, we talked about Fairmont Park, you know, how that was, I call it the dump. It was mm -hmm. an old trailer park. But the county had three or four lots that we had to go mow in there. And it was always interesting to go down there and mow with the people. Yeah. But anyway, that got changed in the 93 flood. Got involved in the 93 flood. We were headquarters to do sandbagging. And we were 27 11 Anderson. But where public works and where we're at mm -hmm. was just a farm. And I actually worked for the county and we planted that whole 40 acres a week. With a little eight foot drill that the parks had. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, well, that's <laughs> some interesting things. A lot, a lot of changes over time. Oh, yeah. My first truck was an 81 Chevrolet one ton. But the mowing tractions weren't too fancy. I actually I had a no cab international with a three point mower behind. That was my actually first mower tractor. We really improved quickly. Yeah. So really great. Okay. Anyway. Fair enough. Anyway, congratulations again. Hope your retirement is going to be everything you dream about. Yeah. Okay. Can we have Photo a picture? Off. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Come over here. Me? No, no. You you stand right there, and that way we'll get you all around. We'll keep our Let's safe distances. Yeah. Okay. Or try it anyway. <laughs> All right, everybody say cheese. Okay. Or happy retirement. Yeah, happy retirement, yeah. That's what we all strive for. Okay. Okay, thank you. Congratulations, Gary. Thank you, Gary. Thank you. I just got a mental picture in my head of Scenic Drive was still a gravel road today. Ooh, when when Vicky first, first came to, I remember when, 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 well, no, when Vicky came first to Manhattan, set job. That's the deal. I mean, back then, it actually was scenic. Now I call that non scenic drive. <laughs> well, you, I call it the, the city side of it non scenic drive, but when you get the county line there and come back out, it's still some scenic. Gary. That's development. Are we ready for Gary? Yep, I'm ready for Gary. Well, good morning, Commissioner. Wait, good morning. Whoa, 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 whoa. We have some other stuff with press conference. No. Gary's a press conference. Gary's He's in the press conference. Oh, okay. Sorry. If you want me to leave, John. <laughs> no, I was looking at the, no, I was looking at the uh, construction proposal there. I thought Rich was next. So. I wanted to inform you of the public that tomorrow we're going to be doing a construction replacement upon School Branch Road in Northern Park County. And the project is located approximately a mile and a quarter north of Fancy Creek Road. So School Branch Road will be closed for Fancy Creek road north of Jerusalem Road. And if everything goes according to plan, we'll have it wrapped up by tomorrow night. Oh, okay, that was great. my question on that. Thank you, Gary. Thanks, Gary. Now one day, I have uh, Mr. One day structure. Vargo. Heavy on the mister. Huh? Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning. Once again, I want to remind everyone that we did send out those advanced by mail applications to every registered voter uh, at the time in Riley County. We sent those out May 28th. 
uh, want to remind people to participate in the election to make the process as simple and smoothly as possible. Anyone that's not currently registered in Raleigh County, then please uh, register uh, by July 14th. That is when the registration books close for the August 3rd primary election. Also want to let people know uh, the ballots that uh, people are applying for right now, they do not uh, get uh, sent out until July 15th. That's the first day for advanced voting by law. That's also when we'll open up in-person advanced voting here at the Riley County Office Building. But that's when the first uh, bulk mailing will go out. We've uh, got over 5,000 applications in already so far. And also want to let people know, uh, while it has been good that we have had a positive response due to these uh, media sessions on getting additional poll workers, one thing that is still concerning for us in that regard is we have had several supervising judges at the polling places decline to work this election. Uh, the supervising judges are typically the individuals, well they are the individuals assigned to being in charge of the polling places. They are the ones with the most experience. And so that is concerning for us because, of course, any system just runs smoother with the more experienced people that you have. So this election, due to the current situation, uh, because of this pandemic, is uh, creating a lot of additional challenges, plus at the polling places, all the additional uh, safety and security aspects we'll have to be throwing in will make it uh, not quite as efficient of a process when people do go to the polls. Do want to remind people that all the polling places at this point in time, we're intending to having all of them open, but uh, we never know if there uh, does uh, become an uptick, if we may get asked to not use certain facilities, uh, we can't mandate that they allow us to use them. So we will keep the public informed as we go along, as the situations uh, continue, but that's why I continue to emphasize uh, people to uh, send in these applications because not knowing what it's going to be like on August 3rd just ensures everyone will get a ballot mailed directly to their doorstep. Any questions? I, I don't. I just have a comment that sir. where I've been around talking to people, they really, especially the elderly, really like that uh, ability. Uh, hot summer, um, whatever it might be, traffic uh, to vote from home and uh, I've got nothing but positive. Uh, some of the younger people have said, no, nah, I still want to go in. So that's fine. Yep. And uh, but, the, but the elderly really is, is looking at it to, uh, to help them out. One of, one of the things I was thinking about over the weekend was, was just impact and voter numbers. Mm -hmm. the more people that vote in this yeah. manner will be, the less that will be actually out voting on. Um, on election days, um, both for the primary and general elections. And considering where we seem to be with this COVID thing right now, it doesn't look like it's just going to tail completely off. I think we're going to be dealing with it for the rest of the year, some way, shape, or form. So lessen the impact of that you know, means you know, less people on election day or through the advanced voting process will probably eliminate a little bit more of that risk. So. Yeah, and that's what I hope, you know, uh, John, I, I get all kinds of comments. We get some of these mailers in and some people are very articulate and letting me know how they feel about the mailers one way or the other. And one was uh, on uh, the mailer actually, you know, stated several reasons why as some people out there in the national media uh, proclaim uh, mail ballot elections are fraudulent and all of that. But then that individual still filled out both applications to receive them ballot by mail. So understands people's concern, change, people never like change, but as I say from the beginning, uh, the choice and the reason to pursue sending out these applications wasn't a political choice uh, because it seems to be divided politically on how people feel about mail ballot elections somewhat, at least in the media locally, we don't find that because we're having uh, many of both parties filling out the applications in equal numbers or more so and so it's just due to necessity yeah. due to the situation we're in because of this pandemic at the time you know we had to start working on this three months ago and we had to envision worst case scenario mm -hmm. and so that's where we had to prepare at that time we just can't make these adjustments on the fly last minute and get this out because uh we do want people to participate and if people were afraid to go to the polls we still wanted them to be able to have the ability to participate and so that's what it's all about is just uh, precautionary and trying to be prepared thank you anything else gentlemen no nope. okay thank you
Well, we have a few minutes before uh, Gary comes back at uh, 10 o'clock. I do have something if, uh, for, for all of us, Gigi. When you come back. <clears throat> Read. I can read. Yeah, well, I've got some Gary, something here to to um, talk about because I think it's important that uh, we 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 do this. Okay? Now, I know you're against the tax, the, the bridge tax, Capson. Not against it. I'm just against doing it this year. Okay. I'll tell you what. I I have a feeling that if we wait till next year. It may not be able to pass because we may have a change in the commission. And if that happens, it ain't gonna it ain't gonna happen. And it'll be past it'll it'll there'll be enough in here that it'll be past the time that um, we can actually get it done. Because it won't go out in the form that I'm looking at right now. So I, I still think we ought to do this. I think we ought to do that this year. If it fails, it fails. But at least we tried. It is one of the better things we have done, and and people are not taxed on this until they spend money. It's not like you're automatically going to be judged and say you've got to pay a half a cent tax, uh, whether you want to or not. If you spend your money in Pot County and Menards, it don't count. But if you spend it in Riley County, it counts. And and, and you can see that the roads and bridges in Riley County, and I've been told that they're excellent, from other, uh, based on other uh, travels that people have done, uh, even by some of my critics, they said the roads are better in, in Riley County because we're able to maintain them, build the bridges, and not have a problem. So what I would ask today, I'm going to make a motion that we do have some sales tax for bridges and roads. And I, I'm looking for a second. It only takes two of us to do it regardless of what happens. So I, I uh, believe that if we get it in this year and it passes, we stand a good chance for it to pass. Mm -hmm. It's not a new tax and it's only on, on those that spend money in the county. It's not on everybody that if you go to Pot County, you don't, you don't, you're not tax tax center. But I think it's important that we do this and we help the other little cities uh, on it uh, because uh, if it goes any other way and and if the other entities get their way on this, uh, little cities will not benefit. Uh, this has already been approved by the by the attorney general, and I think it's a good thing to do. And I'd like to make an attempt. To get it on the on the ballot, let the people vote, and if they vote no, then it's their decision. If they vote yes, then it's their decision. And again, it's not a new tax; it's a continuation of, of what we have done and how we have helped the county. And we're here to help the county, and uh, I cannot see us doing something that will be detrimental to the county by delaying it because it is a good it is a good project. So I make a motion that we put it on the on the next it'd be on the general, right? Uh, yeah November third yeah, yeah, general election. Yeah, yeah. So this is what I'm asking. And they made the motion for us to do that. I just need a second. Well you know that'd be the that'd be the smart thing to do, but yeah I'd be stubborn. I just want to show people that <clears throat> If they want to do the smart thing, what's going to happen? But I'm going to vote against any bond issue to fix the roads and bridges, and I'm just going to vote opposed to it. Because well, I think that, I'm convinced the city's going to put the point four on next next year, next election, and, and uh, the county, you know, the residents will never approve two uh, point four and another half cents. So. Well, is the city going to put that on on this year's ballot? No, next year. Next year. Well, next year, but yeah, but well, then again, but year. then again, if it's not on, if it's on next year's, it doesn't affect this, this today. It does not affect this this uh, ballot. Well, the city can the city can only put it on the city, the city of uh, city residents. They exactly. can't put it but, on the county. What I'm talking about is if, if if they put that on, you're not going you're not going to get two of them to win. 
down the road, if you put a point four up in the city and the county puts one a half, you're not. You're yeah, not well, working. but we're doing that this year, and if the county's going to, no. if the city's going to do it for next year, they don't mix. So I'm afraid. I don't know why I told you so. I, I know. So I'm going to show you. Okay. So, yeah. I mean, that's fine, but I don't want to hurt the county. And if we don't do this, it'll hurt the county. Because then the roads will suffer, the people will suffer in the county, and as a whole, <coughs> And we would have let them down by yep. not doing it. So, and then I can point my finger and say, "Oh, so." Yeah, but I, I understand that. But I did. I think. So I guess my motion as a dies for a lack of a second. Okay. All right, that's fine. And while we're on the discussion, I do want to put it on the record that I don't have a problem with what we're using it for. I have a problem with timing. But that's, the county is somewhat responsible for the scenario that we find ourselves in. It's not our fault specifically, but you know, putting this on here this year when people don't have their businesses, they don't have their livelihood, they don't have a job. But then well, we're asking, you know, we're asking, but please go ahead and pass the sales tax this year for us because we need it for this, this, and this. And we do have other opportunities, and we have other opportunities to balance something out along with it, to me, does not send a good message considering where we're at with this pandemic. And I don't think that we're, I don't think we're done with it yet. Um, I think we're, we're gonna continue to have to work and deal with this probably well into next year to some extent. And you know, the recovery task force meeting that we had on Thursday, there's indications from the health community that we're moving, we're moving too fast, too quickly on reopening. And the numbers that we're getting and receiving kind of indicate certain things. I don't know, there's still a discussion to be had there. So it seems like to me that that's the issue that we really need to, to be working on and taking care of right now and asking for tax, whether it's an extension, whether it's a increase, whatever it is right now, just doesn't seem appropriate. And that's where I, originally before all this took place, I had no problems with it and I still have no problems with it, but given where we're at right now, I think it's not a, it's not what we need to do. Kind of what John says. <clears throat> it has no bearing on anybody paying any additional tax. No, it doesn't take place for years down the road. That's just a, a vote on it sales tax, not a mandatory property tax increase. Right. And with the county being having proven the efficiency that it operated to have this sales tax, the county is low, very low debt, money in the bank, and set the pull of the mill levy. Out of all the other institutions around that has them, they're just shooting for a flat. So I, I think it'd be, I'd say it's a smart thing to do, but there again, I'm going to be in my attention. So, well, on that too, then when you look at the, the, they keep getting the numbers of the number of people who were, who had the virus, but the number of people who recovered, they haven't said that. And I stressed that the other day. Uh, the fact that we don't have that many people with the virus actually right now because the total may be there of who had it, but the majority recovered. Right now, it's less than two tenths of a percent of 50,000 people, and that's just the people in town. That doesn't count the rest of the county. Two tenths of one percent, and we shut things down, and we use that as an excuse to say we can't continue a tax that um, that's two years from now when it's over. But we get it in place, and for twenty years it has been a very effective thing to do. And I, I we need to get we need to get the city back up and running. We need to get the county back up and running. We can't. Do that if we continue to live in fear of what's going on because it will pass as the Spanish flu passed this will pass and I know people are worried and concerned but it will pass and I, I just feel that if we don't get it in now and if things change on the Commission that we don't have the setup that we have now right now with the commissioners It'll never come back because it'll be influenced on the, uh, with only the city will do it 
and we'll never get the county tax again for roads and bridges. And it has been a very successful thing. And now we're going, and if that happens, we're going to have to add more money from the property tax to fix the roads. Oh, right now. Years, but <laughs> you know, I understand, but, it, but why we're here for the county regardless. And if we can't take care of the county, we shouldn't be in the commission. So that's that's my that's my thing. I think it's it's a very uh, when when you get out and get elected in your district, it's a fine thing. But when you sit here, you're for the county. You're not for the district. <clears throat> and those little towns need the money. So okay, had your say, had your say, had my say, and so there we go. <laughs> it's been said. It's been said. Okay, so we're waiting for Gary at 10 o'clock. He doesn't go to sleep. Maybe you have five years. Okay. All right. <clears throat> you like that chair better, huh? Yeah, my computer's about to die, so. Oh, okay. I've got to plug it in. <laughs> okay. I thought I charged it last night, but I guess it fell out. Well, you probably use it a lot. Yeah, mm -hmm. it, it, yeah I can yeah, always have to have a charger, I guess. You know, Sam, since you never come in, I thought I'd never get a chance to tell you what old David said about you at 5.30 in the morning that day. <laughs> so I started working out at 5, and he comes on at 5.30, and Oh boy, I'm gonna get some mileage out of this. <laughs> <laughs> he says some weird things about Well, he's getting old age, you know. Morning again. Yeah. 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 Sure. Some guy tweeted that that's apparently somebody on air. He didn't say what day, but mentioned something about the new PlayStation. Some guy tweeted us because uh, you guys got to remember your demographic is 55. No one gives a crap about that. We didn't even talk about it. I heard when you guys were talking about that. I'm not quite 55, but I'm knocking at the door. But I don't mind hearing about that stuff. Yeah, they, they it's they better than what we've typically been hearing about. At least it's something new and different. <laughs> For the record, I did check that out online on PlayStation 5. That looks uh, looks pretty sleek. I'm not much of a gamer, but I, I can see where it applies. Wait on the price for it. See if I need to sell it. If it's under 800 bucks to start, I'll be shocked. I think it will be. I think it'll be yeah. five, two versions. One that. You can put discs in, and when that won't, won't have any discs. So here's my question then: uh, If I read this right, that you can play any PlayStation disc from the whole series on this? That's what they're aiming for. So I don't know if that would be true. So that basically makes the price of used quite significant at this point in time. So you have like just your basic, I don't know, PlayStation Two, PlayStation Three at home. I would be the general market right now. Probably anything under that's probably, you know, but I'd make those a little bit worth more, both in trade in value and in resale, right? Yeah, I got a few more that, that happened on the Xbox. No? Uh, they were like, oh yeah, we, you can now play all our games on there. Yeah. GameStop, I didn't shop the prices on the yeah. ones that people yeah. like. That was the one thing I was thinking when I was, when I was reading that. <laughs> What's your uh, workout regimen at 5 a.m., Rich? Well, two free weights. What I do? I've got a complete bench set down there. Lots of dumbbells. You know, got a complete set up of 350 pounds of barbell. Got dumbbells up to 40. One extra, I guess, some yeah. old dumbbells. Get about 70. So. Okay. Do all of this old body needs to do. Yeah. You know, hour more. Hour and 45 yeah. minutes. Yeah. 
a routine kind of switches around from upper body to lower body, a little bit of CrossFit to, to cardio. Cardio is what I'm really kind of. I've been letting my body dictate what I do. Don't do. Well. A lot of people do that. Some, some, sometimes it works fine, and sometimes I places on my body kind of hurt. And I'm like, okay, I need to give it another day or two, or I get that residual, you know, then hurt the next day, but it hurts worse the following day. Oh yeah, absolutely. The second day is always worse. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, so I got Worked out, you worked out okay. All right. Do we want to set that up and come in here? Do we want to just do it separately at home? What I need right now is just information on what what it is and what we're allowed to do with it. And then I think our conversations will move forward after that. But I, I just don't know what the, I mean, Sedgwick and Johnson got theirs and they can set theirs up separate because they're yeah. 500,000. We can't. Yeah. I don't know what those guys are. Just so you know, Tammy and I started getting in contact with Sedgwick and Johnson. Actually, the one yeah. that seems the better organized at this point in time is Sedgwick. Yeah. And so we're actually got a meeting this week, a uh, Zoom okay. meeting with their consultant today. Okay. And then we're going to talk to the CPA firm that they're using as well for that. But mm -hmm. it's so new, but they are in the state of Kansas, the most on top of it, aren't they? And, mm -hmm. so, and what people have to understand is that I think you've said something about the city or someone wanted to set up a committee. Yeah. I would hesitate before we commit to anything. Oh, I know. It is, yeah. uh, in watching Shawnee County, uh, they were talking about it. it. It is solely a county function. Yeah. And the county is solely responsible for that. We'll be responsible right. for the audit as well. And so uh, you guys are the ones that should make the decision. But I would imagine we'll have a consultant that plays a heavy role in recommending who mm -hmm. gets money dispersed yeah. to and who doesn't. <clears throat> you said these go hand up. To the guys? Uh, yeah, 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock. Okay. Well, I'm going to do it like this. Turn it over. Don't look at it. If you yeah, look at it, if you look at it, you're we'll lose a finger. Serious trouble. You, you need one? Yeah, please. We we'll don't need one. You. Can't look at it. If you look at it, you're in dire trouble. Can I look at the cover? Out of the back of it. Look, I look at the cover. Mm, no, no, not till then. It is time now. So. All right. <laughs> and Gary. Well, good morning again. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, we're here today to talk about the design build contract for one of our favorite subjects, the RCTD firing range. Uh, just to give you a brief overview, uh, back in on June 1st, we sent a request for proposals to TRS Range Services. They were the only firm that responded to our request for qualifications back in March. In accordance with statute, the proposal came in two parts. Phase two, which was the technical side of it, and it's supposed to be evaluated by a committee, and the recommendation made to move on to phase three. Phase three, which you have in front of you this morning, is supposed to be containing the actual bid cost and proposed project schedule. 
So, back on Friday, the committee made up of Leon Hobson, Alvin Perez, and myself met to evaluate phase two, which we did in accordance to the criteria listed in the proposal, or the request for proposal. And out of 100 points, we awarded them an average total of 85. And recommend to you to move on to phase three today. Okay. So somewhere in there, there should be a dollar amount. Yes, yes. That you can read out. What is the amount, Mark? The amount down here total for the construction, uh, the total design built, because I guess that's the biggest number, is one million forty-three thousand three hundred and seventy-three dollars even. Plus bonding. And then there's also Okay, the, the plus the bonding. Yeah. Okay. And the bonding is nineteen thousand five hundred and sixty six dollars. What's the total cost of the bonding in there? Well, I didn't. Oh, they don't have that on there. Yeah, <laughs> no. So, what was that bonding cost again? Nineteen thousand five hundred and sixty-six dollars even. Thank you. Yeah, it's at huh? How much? What is it? What do you get? A million sixty-two or nine thirty-nine. Okay. Oh, <laughs> <Before> change. <laughs> <laughs> that unfortunately doesn't include the building either. Yeah. Oh no, that's not train. Yeah, that's that's, that's this just firing me. It's just the range. range. It's actually, it's two ranges. Yeah. It's two ranges. Range and qualification and practical range. Okay. So we do not have enough money in CIP right now, so that is the process we'll have to go back to. Say that again, Tammy. We don't have enough in CIP that's been designated. That's been designated, but there is enough money. Oh, yeah, CIP. there's definitely enough money. It's just a conversation you have right. to have for approval. Okay. Yeah. So there's there's plenty of money in CIP, but like Tammy said, there's you only activated so much, but we didn't know what total cost was going to be. But you have to remember they're they're going to want a building on top of that, and staff Brilliant. staff needs to go through and the commissioners to really evaluate is everything that they're presenting is what <clears throat> is needed. Put the building on it. And, and, the, and the hard cost for relocating the easement, you know, it's got to be surveyed and, and uh, actually done, the work done. And then we've got the water line yet, and the water line easement cost. And so I think we're going to pack that up, put it on the ballot in November for bonding out for 20 years. <laughs> Question, John? Yeah. Gary, any other comments? Well, if you like, uh, I'll gather those up, take them back with me, and we'll go through them and evaluate them and make a recommendation to you. Okay. Well, the commissioners probably want to keep a copy. I mean, why can't the commissioners keep a copy? You get one copy. That's fine. Yeah. That one. I mean, you would give Marvin another copy as well. I got, I have one. Oh, you have one? Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, so there were just four pages to that? Yep. Okay. Yeah, that take many pages to spend a lot of money. <laughs> Maybe right, Small. They did. <laughs> Until the last number. Okay. So for the moment, do we need to make a motion to select this consultant and plan, or what is, what is our step here? Well, I, I believe, uh, Gary, you guide us, Gary, but you asked the board to consider authorizing, proceeding on to design phase three. Cost schedule. Is that what you need today, or what you need from the board today, so you can proceed? 
you know, I could, what I was intending to do, Rich, was go through, take a look at this. We'll make a recommendation to you. Okay. okay. Do that. Now, you realize this, this is the only guy in the works here, so, uh, but I would like to see, make sure you got everything covered that we asked. Okay. And then, uh, again, like you guys were saying, you've got a range building out here. That's a separate issue going on. You've got your water line. That's a separate issue. This is strictly for the design and construction of the fire engines. So. Well, this is the part that we're statutorily required for, so. That'd be great, Gary. That'd be great. Okay. Appreciate that. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Thank you. Uh, this is Leon. Yeah, Leon. I uh, just wanted to remind the commission that uh, the building is moving forward to going out to bid as per the commissioner's decision and discussion from the other day. So if there's reservations about that, you need to let us know. Because uh, really all we were waiting on for that was the establishment of the direction the range was going to go and then we could uh, site the building in and so the uh, consultants are working on that now and moving forward to taking that out to bid very soon. So just wanted to let you know that's the progress and position of where that building is. Leon, did you have an estimate on that building? Uh, it was what, Gary, around 400,000? I think it was four to five. Mm -hmm. Just that, thank you. Just so the board has an yeah. idea, since they're looking at dollars now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're saying another half a million just for the building. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'll do that. We had three different proposals for buildings as well, didn't we? Yeah, we had three different, and each one was a stage. Yeah, and, and it came down to the just a, a basic one. Right. That that's the one that we're looking at. Right. Plus land cost a little bit. <clears throat> Estimated water line all over. We're looking at about two million dollars. Could be with everything, yeah. And it's also my recollection that the number you received today has been. I think that's consistent with where they've been on their original estimates all the way through this process. But we can verify that for you. But I think that's about where that number's been. Sure, and verify all that, Gary. We come back and bring a recommendation to the board. Leon can do it. Okay, appreciate that, Leon. <laughs> You've been delegated. It's the wrong way delegation works. <laughs> <laughs> it's worth a shot. That yeah, was well, all right. Use the grinder pump. <laughs> yeah. All right, thank you. Nothing else. Thanks, I'll be Leon. on my way. Okay, right. Thanks, thank you, Leon. Thank you, Gary. Thank you. Thanks, guys, for coming in. If we jump on it, the entire range project will be completed in October 15th. When? October 15th. So, I mean, uh, I don't know what Stalin's going to do either. It's just sticker, sticker shops is the big thing. It's yeah. just, uh, you know, you change something 100000 bucks, that's not a big deal, $2 million. That's, yeah. Right. It's going to be every bit of 1.7, 1.8. That's kind of what I was figuring all along. And you just figure things all never go smooth. No. Not particular, yeah. yeah, particularly when it's something like this that we already had to do a special use type of permit for anyway. So and we just got to be sure to have Gary go through it and be sure everything's uh, addressed. Yeah. You know, it's a big thing. Yeah, the dollars are about what we thought the dollars would be. Yeah. But the thing is, is what you've got to remember is it's going to be a significant improvement over what we had, which means some needed some improvement. Yes. I'm not saying you had to change the location, but you did have no, to. No, like I say, we did know, have to make improvements there as well. well I realize that we still had had expense there, but still, it's been a fraction of the budget. I mean, we're saving a lot of money. Okay, Mr. Clancy Holman. Morning, Mr. Morning. Morning. Uh, I want to jump forward on the matters I've got in front of you today to the interlocal cooperation agreement with K-State. Uh, that is something that was discussed during last spring's uh, flooding, uh, but it got, uh, never got resolved because of other items that were, quite frankly, more important to deal with. 
what this provides is uh, for, as the car indicates, for the sharing of resources and to clarify when incidents come in, given the location of where they respond, where that lies. Um, emergency management has approved the form of this. Uh, I see no reason not to move forward with it. It is interlocal. It, it is a true interlocal agreement, so it will need to be approved by the AG. So once you sign it and the signatures are on it for everybody, the AG will need to see it approved. They'll have it for tradition shows up to 90 days. If they can't approve it before then, if they don't, if the AG does not, as we talked about before, then it does become an interlocal agreement. More likely than that, uh, simply letting it sit there will be at some point we may get proposals to change certain things. Probably not subsidy, but most often they're on the form and what the agencies receive or such like that. So be glad to answer any questions you've got about this. And if you don't have any any I'll just ask for a motion to let me do that. So K State as a state funded agency is still considered in the local huh? well it's it, what you have to have is you have to qualify under the statute maybe uh, okay. <laughs> That's a good question. But there are limits on who you can enter. Right. Side. For example, you couldn't have two different local groups with private business. Right. Good motion, gentlemen. Um, okay. Um, I move the move. board authorize signature of the agreements presented. Yeah. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I was just trying to figure out. Here we go again. No, that was here when I got here this morning, the Clancy. So yeah, it was here this morning when I got here. Yeah. Okay. I have to look inside, I guess, to see whose it is. Mike is laid out there on the credenza. Maybe someone's in there. Find it. Oh, what the? Dude, it's got my phone number. <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> I was say you might look on the other side of it, see whose it was. Like it doesn't have a stick figure of oh. you with an extra, does it? I'm sure that's in <laughs> You know what the difference is between a, the ball identical, what a fault case range and a fact range? The book for fact range. I don't own this. Um, fact range, but why not a combination one? I don't know. No, I'm serious. I mean, if you look at the, what, what they include, their duplicate, is that what you're saying? No, I mean, if, you, if the one just has one position where you stand at the uh, uh, 25 yard line, but then the other one, maybe you have a, you have a uh, two to three farm position at 100 yards, make one range, 12, 12 lane range, and then you, one day you do the Jumping around the other day, you do this. You know, I mean, that's, I, I don't have any idea. It's not my job, but it looks like a duplication to me. Possible. Because they might have used both ranges at the same time. I, I think I remember when their presentation, I think that they're totally different types of practice. Yeah, where, they where are. Where the stationary yeah. 25 foot range isn't adequate, but that's a good question that the board should ask. That's a question you have. For sure. Yep. I think we're going to talk about the company and figure out it. A good question. Here he comes back. I'm sure our video will be here. Cut. Final item I have is just a very brief comment that at the risk of talking about a fire engine, we'll 
talk about the other fire engines, mm -hmm. the current fire engines. Yeah. Uh, we're trying to arrange, and I think we will successfully arrange and walk through kind of a tunnel walk through. But the current range was represented as RCPD, Public Works, and myself will go through there and get on, try and get on the same page with the landlord and final acts. We need to take some more to get out of there by the end of June. I'll bring back any results we have of that. I don't think it'll be very complicated. And correct me if I'm wrong, but just want to be sure we have terminology right, given what we're dealing with, but wouldn't it be referred to as the previous firing range? Because we no longer have a lease with them, correct? Or no, we got a lease right now. Until the end of June? Until the end of June. End of June. Okay. So it is sure. a current firing range, but it's the one you're leaving at the end of June. Right. Yeah. So. Okie dokie. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> and Dory Tammy again. Yep. Your favorite subject. Yep. Now, if I can see, uh, you know, <laughs> when it comes, if I could show a, show a concept of what the, the layout is, they have the canopy, the bullet trap, uh -huh. and stuff. Okay, so if they say they had to expand that a little bit to make it a combination um, and, and make it for 750000 instead of $1 million, I mean, that's, I think. Somebody that's in the business should be able to do that. I understand the this, this company's deal. The more they sell, the more they make. Oh yeah. So that's my little bit of blurriness. I mean, well, that's something to look at. I think. I think you're right. So this is this is Leon. Yes. So in hearing that conversation. <clears throat> Do you want to get the the PD back in to have a work session on it again and talk about it, or what do you want to do? Well, I think it's important that uh, we realize, uh, you know, the possibilities, and if there's not a possibility physically, then it's fine. But if there was a way to integrate them uh, together and have one, I think it would be uh, important <clears throat> to to see what 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 it is because that's a lot of dollar yeah i know i know there were there was talk that, that they would do each one separate from the standpoint that one might be a they might bring vehicles in there and station them and then do and, and those would be going on at the same time that the others are uh in there qualifying yeah so both ranges would be used at the same time and the car may or may not be, you know, I think in the, in our existing range, there's just an old junk car that sets out there that's not movable. And so you'd have to move those things in and out all the time if you were going to do those kind of things in the, and then try to do a qualifying event, you'd have to be constantly moving things. but. Uh, I don't have any problem with having the PD come back in and talk to you about in more detail and probably a better explanation of what the, how they would be using the range. Yeah. Well, if you have to schedule a group two days, you know, back to back, instead of having all the ranges in use for one time, why, you know, for that kind of money, it's, and there again, that's, I'm not familiar with what they're doing, so. So I, what I'm hearing is it would be beneficial to have the PD come in and at least just have a conversation about it. Right, right. Okay, we'll get that scheduled. Okay. Thanks, Leon. Thanks. Yeah, because I understand if they want to have 12 group, I mean 12 here and 12 here operate at the same time, well, if you do a combination and you have practical on Monday and whatever the other one is on Tuesday, they, they they're on duty and yeah. paid for this. There's no extra money out of our pocket. If it saves, say, $250,000, that's the price of the building, the building and everything else that goes into yeah. it, and that keeps us at that 1.5. Yeah. Good idea. Yeah. I don't have a problem with that. So now it's time to ask the question yeah. if you guys have them. Yeah. For sure. Just need to clarify. It's a lot of money. Yeah. 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 to the taxpayers. I'll yeah. emphasize once again. The need to adequately fund CIP and then the projects. And then, you know, with this national outcry, 
on the, on the use of uh, deadly force. In another year, you turn around where they have to use some electronic stun thing. Or I thought about that. Mm -hmm. There hasn't been the major push here to do some of the other things that are being done around the country. I'll just and say that. See but, what they're using paintball guns. Yeah, in a lot of cities. Yeah, marks the guy. <laughs> That's exactly why they're doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm just glad right. that we have some understanding i guess amongst everybody involved with vested interest here um and hopefully we can continue to work dialogue and work through those those things i feel like what that little town did i don't know where it was at i had a hole somewhere when antifa started to come in the whole town broke out with all their ar-15s and everybody on motorcycles and they just lined the streets and guarded the front of the stores. And uh, Antifa ended up having to leave because they they said they lined them up, give me your crowbar, give me your deal, and they were very cordial about receiving the the people gave it to them because all these guys lined up with poster pistols and, and AR-15s and and the, the rioters left town and left all the paraphernalia and all the crowbars and shovels and everything else there signs too vicky showed that me on facebook yesterday it's one way to solve it crazy world right now yep mm -hmm. they didn't have a riot no shots were fired There you are again. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> well, I don't know. You're a shining man. <laughs> shining man. You know, you got uh, Franklin Roosevelt on the 50 cent piece. Kennedy, uh, see who's on the dollar? Who's on the dollar coin? I think it's either Benjamin Franklin or, or uh, somebody else. But uh, Franklin Roosevelt's on a dime, and he's got some others. Kennedy's on a fifty cent piece. But do you know why Lincoln is on a penny? Very important president. He's on a penny. His comment comment one time was that. Uh, he he loves to inter interact with the common man and he says common man there's so many of them god must have loved him the common man so there's there so many so that's why he's on the penny a lot of pennies around Did he say he him? right that wasn't Lincoln, by the way. <laughs> that was Benjamin Franklin. Oh, no, I thought it was my dad. <laughs> <laughs> my grandfather, that's for sure, yeah. yeah. <laughs> a penny picked up off the ground where everyone walks on it is a penny earned. It's saved. I do pick them up. Yeah, I do too. <laughs> How's it going? Good. Yeah, there's been, been a drive to take, get rid of the penny because it's just the penny. But what do you do when you go in and, and you boot, the time you do the tax and you're going to get change, you know, who keeps the penny? Who's, and you, if, if you do it enough of all the things that are broke out, somebody gets rich over that. And so, yeah, we still need the penny. Spent a summer working out at the country club. And we used to glue pennies down to the oh. concrete path that led up to the golf course. 
want entertainment, that's entertainment. Oh, and then Dr. Short's <laughs> house. And, I'm sorry. being both, <laughs> both. <laughs> People <laughs> trying to kick at that, trying to get it up off the ground, trying to. Oh. Yeah. Oh, Robert Lignus was to Dr. Short's house. I put some temporary stairs up the second stairway and for construction, and he glued 50 cent, he bought the 50 cent piece on the step there. Mm -hmm. so, what the hell are you doing, Robert? Oh, he says, fun to watch people pull their fingernails off. <laughs> people cussing, throwing golf clubs. I mean, yeah. This is before YouTube, too, or so it's been really entertaining. Morning. Well, Sean, I don't, my son got his, his handicap thing came in the mail after I talked to you last week, and, and uh, he says, "Dad, I got to get the uh, numbers off of the blue card." And they, oh, he said, "No, they're on here." And he got it all filled out. I know the last couple of days have been laying on the desk there. And I said, well, "When are you going to mail that, Sean?" Yeah. And it says in person or mail or email and I said, well, just mail it. Well, they didn't send an envelope. <laughs> I said, I'll first stamp it. <laughs> so when I get back, I got to get him an envelope. <laughs> you could just bring it for me. <laughs> I don't think, they, they don't send one of my registration renewal either anymore, so. Yeah. Yep. John, a lot of the states such as uh, Texas and Arizona are throwing out the philosophy of warmer weather and kills it. It's not. I've been watching the numbers there. I said that early on. Yeah. You just watch some of the foreign countries early on. It's like, yeah. I'm, I mean, I'm not a California. scientist, but I don't know. Arizona, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Arizona is the, the one that really kind of shocks me. Yeah. Um, most of their tourism is recreational, it's not at a beach, it's not, you know, mm -hmm. confined, but I, uh, it's hard for me to understand what a second wave looks like if you don't really get out of the first. Yeah. I, I don't know. Um, so 20 states are showing pretty good uptick mm -hmm. right now. Yeah. We're just like a week ago. Like, no. Yeah, they're, they're, but keep in mind, they are based on the <clears> fact <throat> that it went down and it's coming back up, but it still hasn't come back up to its original late April, early May. Um, numbers. Sometimes everyone was hoping the trend would continue to ban all more so this time yes. year. Not, not, not looking that way. <clears throat> we are technically in early summer though, so I mean, never know. It looks like it's parallel to 1918. And, and yeah. Down and everybody threw their masks away and then it skyrocketed. And Tammy, by the time you get up there, it'll be time. <clears throat> You walk too fast. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's doing good, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Right out of that here. there you go. Good morning, Commissioner. Good morning. Good morning. Tammy Robinson, Budget and Finance Officer, here with the uh, 2021 Budget Work Session. I brought back the information that you had requested from Thursday's meeting. So, with that, you can see the cost of a building receptionist for the salary and benefits within the treasurer's budget would be an additional. Thirty-six thousand eight hundred twenty-one dollars, mm -hmm. and the commission five percent salary reduction, including wages and benefits decrease, would be ten thousand ninety-one dollars. And I give you the amount in the uh, budget development worksheet that it's reflecting right now, and what it would reflect if that's how you wanted to change it. And then the CIP transfer of one million that's earmarked for the EMS facility. That is on the budget development worksheet. However, you can make an adjustment any way that you would like on that. Um, 
the building receptionist also is not reflected in those numbers at this point because that's something that you wanted to discuss this morning. So with that, on the budget and developmental worksheet, it is the same thing that you had seen the other day. And I'm here for you to make any decisions or any additional discussion that you would like at this time. <clears throat> well, I was thinking I was okay with all three of those. I don't know how Tyler, you're going to work that thirty-six extra thirty-six thousand into your budget, but. <coughs> Yeah, it would be an increase to this is for all because that's for next year's budget. Right, right. Yeah. Um so the the treasurers and the commission are in the same, both in the general fund. So basically your net would be it's gonna be an increase of twenty six thousand between those two. Any other comments? I don't know. I mean, I don't, think so. I don't want to fight tooth and nail for another dollar or two because we don't know what expenses, unnecessary, uh, hidden things may crop up in 2021. Yeah. Also, I mean, it's we don't know where we may get some, you know, because I would assume departments and outside agencies kind of thought about the COVID you know, pandemic in terms of how they budgeted to and. Maybe there's some grants, maybe there's some extra funding, maybe some other things come in to fill in a few gaps there as well. But uh, um, once again, just because it's budgeted, it doesn't mean that they have to spend it. Right. But well, and if there is grants and stuff, kind of like you know the money we're getting for the elections, if they reimburse us for fall one. Have that additional money that we get to keep within our budget, mm -hmm. you know, that yeah, wouldn't right. come from an outside source, of course, that could happen as well. Yeah, help the county pay their money. Yeah, that's kind of what one of the points I had over the weekend when I was studying <clears> this. What does the CIP, the CIP transfer doesn't affect any of those numbers at this point, right? It doesn't affect those numbers, but it does affect that more tax dollars okay. because it's a transfer from the general fund. Okay. Consider, I, you know, I was yeah. just going to say on that transfer that maybe we continue. You know, I guess we really can't. We either got to do it now or pretty soon, don't we? It's, it's not long. To be in the budget, right? To be in the budget, and I, I still think we need to have some more in depth conversation about what we want to do and how we're going to go about doing that. So maybe we wait on the transfer, but kind of keep it. To the side, maybe. Well, if you don't budget it, then you right. won't have those funds come in right. to do it. Right. Yeah. But I don't think if we we're don't, gonna... if we budget it, and then for some reason that we can transfer it back to general fund. You have to budget it now to have it available. That's what I mean. We have to budget it now. If you don't budget it now, it's not available next year. Right. And and what you do have the discretion to do as well is because. The way it's worded in here now, at least, uh, narrows it down. EMS facility, you guys can just say an additional million dollar transfer, mm -hmm. not knowing what, what's going to happen. It doesn't have to be earmarked. But right. even if you do earmark it, you can change that earmark next year as well. So I guess, I guess for me, i just kind of trying to think out. I mean, are we going to have something in place to even do that next year for EMS? I mean, it's kind of take somewhat of a process there, isn't it? My thought was if the board was going to go down this road of a million dollars for EMS, your, your approach you're saying you're going to take is maybe somewhat like you did with the shop site. A million this year, maybe a million next year, because you don't want to in two years say, oh, now we want two million, then the mill levy really goes up. So you have a little bit, a little bit each year, and then at the end of three or four, five years, you have the money to do what you want. 
but no, I don't think anyone envisioned a million dollars could accomplish what you want. But a million dollars, if you guys decide to go another site, another site may purchase the land that you want, right. and so you and then you would sell the site that you have, and so it gives you more flexibility. And you just saw how quickly it took to go through a million dollars within the last thirty minutes. And that kind of just changed my mind on that a little bit then too, <laughs> having that having that money not earmarked maybe because we may need it bits and pieces of it here to, to finish this project up. I, I don't know, it's a, it's a catch. It's a real catch. And, uh, yeah, you don't have to have an earmark for any any uh, capital item specifically. You can still just do the million dollar transfer. Mm -hmm. I'm fine with that. Yeah, I am too. Okay. We're fine with what? The million dollar transfer as EMS facility or just the million dollar transfer because we want to have that clarified. You can designate it for whatever you specifically want later in the future. Maybe we just leave it just general for the moment. Yep. That way if some other things come up or some other expenses come up or I guess covered. Okay. But the priority of it would be to keep it set aside for that. Mm -hmm. Tammy can make a note yeah. on the CIP, you know, that the commission, you know, has a priority to possible leave a million dollars available for any mess facility, yeah. but it won't be specifically activated for that. Okay. Yeah, because it really should go another 20 years calling us an EMS list. No, I, I agree. I agree. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we'll, we'll leave it as it is and with possible designation that we will if if possible to work it for EMS. Not something else rears its head. We've got we're covered. Okay. We need a motion on that. It'd be good to have a motion on all three of those if okay. these gentlemen agree to those. Have a motion. Well, that's John worded. <laughs> I'm just, so I'm trying to figure out can we move, move to. Uh, Approve the uh, receptionist position of 36,821 31 to be budgeted in the uh, treasurer's department, commission salary reduction of $10,091, and CIP transfer of $1 million. No, don't say anything about EMS facility. That. Additional. <laughs> no, that's what, that's additional, what that. additional $1 million. Was that, was that the 5% we're reducing? Yes. It by? Okay. Uh, what he said, I make that motion. Okay. I uh, move that uh, we, have, we approve cost of billing receptive salary benefits in the treasurer's budget of 36 8 21 31. Commission 5% salary reduction, including wage and benefit, total of $10,091. And the CIP transfer of $1 million. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So with that, do you want me to make these adjustments on the budget developmental worksheet for them Thursday yep. for a formal approval to be sent to the CPA yep. for review mm -hmm. on the budget? Okay, that's what we'll plan on doing. Okay. Is there anything else discussion wise on anything that needs to be discussed or question? I don't have any. Yep, Shyla has a question, John. I just have a quick question about the receptionist position and just something that I'd like you maybe to consider is that we still have six more months of the year. Um, I know this position we were talking was for um, for next year's budget, but we really do have a need for it now. And so I was wondering if the commissioners would consider letting us go ahead and get that filled for the remainder of this year. It'll be about half of what yeah. that budget amount is. Mm -hmm. I and I just like to, you know, I mean, it's, it's starting to get hard on my staff to, to have a guest sitting out there all day long. And so really would like to see if we could get that, get that ball rolling if possible. Mm -hmm. yeah, motion on that. I, I was thinking about that too, because I, I knew this was just for 2021 and I've been back and forth and seen you and Donna and several other people in and out of there. I would assume that this could be considered a COVID related expense probably for the rest of 2020. Oh yeah. 
is right. um, that's easily. kind of what my thoughts were yeah. as well. So mm -hmm. I, I was thinking at least for this year that that would probably cover that, and then that's basically a budget neutral um, expense right now. To try to maintain, it, particularly as we get in towards the end of the year for you, where all these deadlines that have been extended out will then become, and it won't. It doesn't sound like it's going to be pretty. So I would naturally assume that would be the case. So. And had to be at about a half rate right now, so you're talking 16, 18. Yeah. <clears throat> that would probably, yeah, that would that'd be fine. Okay. So, do we need consensus or a motion on that? Motion would be great. Yeah. I can make a motion we approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. I greatly appreciate that. Does that, uh, in terms of how we approach that, that's just put out for opening? Um, what I'll do is bring back a gold sheet for Thursday that will give your authorization to post the position. Uh, we do have a job description already. Okay, that's, that was going to be my second question. Okay. Yeah, and so really everything's in place. Okay. Formally get that gold sheet signed on Thursday. Okay. Be ready to go. That's all I have for today. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen, before Tammy gets away, um, given our uh, county official discussion, uh, after the budget, maybe early fall or sometime, Tammy could uh, put together a commission agenda report just to re-educate not only the commissioners, but the public about financing options for facilities that the county government has, this overall education facility with no facility in mind, just the financing methods are available. Sure. Does that sound okay? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Next slide. Thanks, Danny. Yep. Got it. Okay. Anything else to discuss? So, if nothing else, can I get a motion for adjourn? I'll make a motion for adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you guys. Appreciate it. Which one? Good day. Good day. Thanks. Good day. Thanks. Thanks. Good day, guys. You too. Uh, sorry about the technical difficulties, but it just happened. Yeah, I don't understand. I don't know. Mary would have. She's